today from Ford Field in Detroit. This is Madden Football on EA Sports. Taking on Jalen Hurts and the Philadelphia Eagles. First open in 2002. There's a look inside Ford Field here in downtown Detroit, the Motor City. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Philadelphia Eagles and the Detroit Lions. Two men ready to do battle. It's time to dance. And we are underway from Ford Field. From a couple yards deep, he'll bring it out of the end zone. And ultimately cannot get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Now, for the first time, we get to see this Philadelphia offense led out by their dual-thread quarterback now in his third season, Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts got the green light as a starter from the Philly organization and took really good steps as the next in line of mobile quarterbacks in the city, following names like Michael Vick, Donovan McNabb, and Randall Cunningham. He led the team in all quarterbacks in the NFL in rushing, and he took Philadelphia to the postseason while throwing for over 3,000 yards. Hurts throw complete here to his receiver, Brown. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. Four yards the result on the first play from scrimmage. Second down. Timing is everything, and they work on this cut all the time. They work on all the timing patterns, and this paid off for them. Worked him to the center of the field, cut it to the outside, ball's delivered, gets both feet down for the completion. Now they'll run the option to the short side left. And not a whole lot doing there, as so he'll get it up to about the 28-yard line. Only a yard there on the keeper, and that's going to leave him with a third down. They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Hurt sets up to throw it. Oh, it's a screen pass. That's complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. The drive stays alive. A third down gain of eight. I like the screen being called here early in the game, especially on the opening drive, because, Brandon, when guys come out of the locker room, especially those pass rushers, they are so amped up to get to the quarterback that you can use that against them, and a screen pass is a great way of doing it. A lot of teams against good pass rushing teams, they want to run the screen 10 to 12 times in a game. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Throwing his hurts. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. From the snap, he certainly looked like he knew where he wanted to go with the ball, but surprise, that guy was covered. So that took his attention elsewhere to no avail. After the incomplete pass here now is second and 10. Hurts. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. Hurts dangerous when he runs that football. He's got a first. That's multiple times now. He's tagged them with a big gain with his legs. Really showing off some nice awareness and the ability to correctly realize when he's got a chance to tuck it and go himself. Yeah. 
A couple of first downs on the drive already as they'll go from the 47 now on first down. They will run for the first time with Miles Sanders. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. 11 yards there, just like last play. And that's a run that'll energize an offensive line. They'll take that one all day long. Fundamental breakdown by the defense. You've got to be able to make plays on the edge. So the ball moves into Lion territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Another run here with Sanders. And after the good game last play, this time they say, uh-uh, as he's going to be stopped behind the line of scrimmage. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Well, it's almost football 101 that you preach to your safeties. Don't let anyone get behind you. You're the last line of defense. But he didn't let the play come to him. He went to the play. How about that read and recognition and finishing off that one behind the line of scrimmage? A small bit of adversity here on what's been a strong drive as they come up second and 12. Hurts a handoff to Sanders. And he's going to be stopped at about the 37. A gain of eight there on the eighth play of the drive. They've got to give kudos to your offensive line and the guy carrying the ball because they were in a second and long situation. It seemed pretty dire, but they brought it back to third and manageable with that run. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Here's Hurts to throw. Got a man. It's Brown. And it's going to be another first down as they'll get him to the ground at the Lions' 24-yard line. 12 yards on third down as the drive rolls on. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely. As one of the better coaches in the league always tells me, on offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now, but in one uppercut, We'll take care of the end of this drive. On first and 10, it's Sanders. And he'll get about five here as he'll take this down inside the 20-yard line. A quick burst there, and he nicely bit off a pretty decent gain. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. Throwing from the gun, it's Hurts. And he's dropped just before the line to game. Four-yard pickup leaves him with third and one. And that's an early scramble that can be viewed positively by either side. From the offensive point of view, it begins to establish him as a possibility to keep it on certain plays. And defensively, they avoided giving up a huge play under their first test in containing a quarterback on the run. They'll try and run for it with Sanders. And that one going nowhere from the start as he's met in the backfield and goes backwards. Losing two yards that time, and now it's fourth down. Just a simple run play there on third and one, but this D was up to the challenge and stopped them, bringing up fourth down. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. From the right hash, just a 34-yard attempt. The kick by Elliott is good. And the Eagles, they take a 3-0 lead. Able to move the ball on that drive. Yes, just three points, but four first downs were in there. Yeah, and you can look at it and feel pretty good about the whole thing and think, okay, this should continue throughout this ball game. On the flip side, if you're a defender, it's almost like whew, we only gave up three. They moved the ball on us pretty well.
after the field goal. Here's Elliott to kick it away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And not much happening on the return as he'll get this to about the 23. Detroit gets set to go on offense, and it will be the seventh-year pro out of Cal, Jared Goff, leading the attack in his season as a Lion. Certainly a different circumstances awaited Jared Goff in Detroit last season after his trade from Los Angeles. He made what he could out of them and managed three wins on a rebuilding Lions team. They should improve this year behind Goff after an offseason where they make considerable investments in order to try and improve this ball club. And meanwhile, Goff's throw taken in by Hawkinson here. Nothing after one on EA Sports. Chain second in two. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. Well, we've seen running backs in today's NFL get involved in the passing game. Maybe it's about time more receivers like that get involved in the running game. And that is something we are seeing more and more in this league. No question about it. That wasn't the biggest of gains, but it was enough to get them a first down. And it continues to test the defense. They have to play about who might end up with the ball. On first and 10, it's Swift. And he'll get this up to about the 40. A gain of three last play. This time they double it and pick up six. Well, I think after that run, the defense is getting back in the huddle and looking at each other and maybe starting to question their confidence a bit. They gave up a significant run, six yards, and now you're saying to yourself, how do we stop them, and do I have enough confidence to make a play? Right back to Swift again on second down. And this will wind up a Lions first down as he's got this up to the 45-yard line. Swift split carries down the middle with Jamal Williams in 2021, but he's one of Detroit's busiest players in the passing game. He caught 62 passes, second on the team, and fourth among NFL running backs. His showing could convince the Lions to make him their RB1. Once again, it's Swift to about the 48-yard line. I feel like I could see what he was thinking on that carry. He wanted to follow that big tackle through the hole. Ended up only getting four yards on the carry. I think he had designs on that one being bigger. Following the pickup of four, here's second and six. Go off a handoff here to Swift. And across the midfield, stripe into Eagle territory. It's a five-yard gain, but they'll still be a yard short here with third down now. But if your starting running back finishes the game with averages of five or six yards per touch, you'll take that every single time. This will be play number seven on the drive. Third and eight. They'll try and run for it. Here's Williams. And he's brought down, but not before picking up the first with a very effective stiff arm. A third down gain of three yards, and that'll be enough. That's quite a spot there for his first carry of the game, but obviously they had plenty of faith in him, didn't they? No question about it. And here, why not go with the fresh legs? Able to push forward, pick up that first. They'll try the air now with Goff. He rifles one that's intercepted. And the Eagles are going to have the short field here as they'll take over right at the 50. 
Oh, this is a great play right here by a very versatile linebacker. It's a zone defense, so he's responsible for one area of the field. And Brandon, I don't think the quarterback ever saw it. Or if he did, he saw him too late because he snuck into a great position there to pick that one off. So back onto the field, here come the Eagles for their second drive. They'll have good field position at midfield following the turnover as they start with the first down here. Good starting field position for them as they come up first and at the 50-yard line. From the midfield stripe, they'll look to throw. Open man, that's Devontae Smith. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. It's a gain of 13 and a first down for Philadelphia. Devontae Smith's workload certainly didn't get any lighter going from being a Heisman Trophy winner at Alabama to his first year with the Philadelphia Eagles. 104 targets as a rookie and his 916 yards for a Philly wideout since 2015. They go to him there for a first down. Open man is Goddard, the tight end. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. So just three yards on the completion there. And it'll be second down. Yeah, that one was covered pretty well because they were trying to leak the tight end out into the flat. I think they were hoping he could catch and turn up field and pick up the first down. Well, they don't need to run another play here before the two-minute warning. Let's see if they do it anyway. And they run the option on second down. And inside the 20 before he's brought down. Really good effort. He does it himself, picks up 15, also picks up the first down. Second quarter, two minutes remain. 3-0 our score. They had to settle for three last drive, hoping this second go around ends in six. In good position, first and ten. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. They made a nice effort to stick him with a loss for that play, but it's going to take more than that to keep him from advancing the ball. Should be an entertaining battle anytime he tucks and runs over the second half of this contest. From the 16, Hurts. And it's caught. Touchdown. Jalen Hurts finding A.J. Brown. And the Eagles are able to cash it in for six. And there they got him the ball. Just get it to him. Let him do the rest. You know, he probably said that to his quarterback as he broke the huddle. I like the play call. Just get it to me. I'll take care of the rest of it. Helping out his rack, right? R-A-C. Run after catch. And he loves that. And he's going to carry that in at contract time. On for the extra point, Jake Elliott. It's up and good, and that'll increase their lead to 10-zip. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it's capped off by an A.J. Brown touchdown. Now after the touchdown, here's Elliott on to kick it away. Take it in at the three. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Come on, let's go. Back onto the field come the Lions for their second overall drive. 
And they're in an early hole. The first drive, they threw the interception. That led to a touchdown. So decent sized deficit early on. It is, but I think you hit the key words early on. So they have to decide, do we even need to change game plan? Or do we just need to execute better and try and get back in this game? Call it a gain of six on the play, and it'll be second down. And they're trying to line up quickly here. Goff urging them on. Second and four. And come to this point, I've been impressed with the work defensively. They have not allowed a lot of receivers to run free. And there's another example, another incompletion. A third down and four after that incompletion on second down. Goff now to throw. And that is incomplete. Well, they've moved the ball okay here in these first two drives, but this one's going to, again, amount to nothing. They've got to start dialing up some plays that allow them to finish drives with points. Fourth down, Jack Fox on to punt for Detroit. It's a 45-yard punt, just a one-yard return. And the Eagles will have it taking over first and ten. The Eagles offense is going to take over late in this first half. And with a two-score lead already, they may just look to get this thing to the locker room. But first down, Hurts. And now this is intercepted. My goodness. It's the linebacker, Alex Anzalone. And they're going to be set up in the red zone right around the 17-yard line. So first thing crossed my mind is why didn't they just sit on the lead and take it to the locker room? They're in good shape. Absolutely. And from this spot on the field, now you've given the other side a chance for points here going into intermission. Yeah, you changed the momentum of the game and it's something you did not need to do. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. After the interception, here's Gall. Catch is made by Hawkinson, the tight end. The Lions will use the first of their timeouts as the clock will stop with 35 seconds to go in quarter number two. Ball on the eight, second and two. Goff now looking to throw. And he's got it. And in for the Lions, touchdown. Jared Goff to Amon Ross St. Brown. And the Lions are on the board here in the final minute of the first half. The way this one was going, you just got the sense they needed something before half. They've at least got something on the board now. Still trailing, but a good sign. That takes me back to our preseason tour of NFL camps. You remember we, we talked with that one coach who said his emphasis this year was scoring in the last two minutes yeah. of a half, heading into the locker room. This hits it right there. Take that momentum, take that good feeling, and take the locker room, regroup, and start over. They got it here. They did indeed, and a lot of football, full half to be played. Extra point by Seibert, up and good. And that'll cut it to three at 10-7. Well, that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory exposition. Two plays later, pay dirt.
So just a three-point game now as they send this one away. And he'll elect not to return this one, so they'll bring it out to the 25 on the touchback. The Eagles offense is going to take over late in this first half. And leading 10-7, and they may just want to get this to the locker room. Just over 30 seconds to go in the half. They've got it first and 10. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. And he'll protect himself at the end here as he winds up getting pretty decent yardage. The improv on the scramble there gets him six, and it'll be second down. Certainly not the way they drew it up in the playbook, but that's why they love this guy back there. He sees things breaking down, and he's more than capable of finding an escape route and still getting a decent gain. They'll throw now on the final play. He's got Dallas Goddard, his tight end over the middle. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. So we've reached halftime here, and it's our visitors, the Eagles, leading this one. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome, everyone, to our brand-new studios here in downtown Orlando in the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one's been as good as advertised. Just a field goal separating these two teams as they've already made their way back out of the locker room. So to bring you the story of the second half, let's get you right back out to Brandon Godden. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments in the quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. football to start the second half and they trail here as we get back underway on EA Sports no run back here to begin the half and we will start at the 25 yard line the Lions offense now with a football first here to begin quarter number three and they do trail but they have a chance to possess the football first to try and do something about it and that certainly makes it something of an important drive for them because is it going to win the game no but you have to do something to bring some life to your sideline. Goff throw going into the hands of Williams. And he gets this one just shy of the 40. They'll mark him down at the 39. Just his second catch of the game so far. This one moves the chains. Now that was pretty. They executed that curl route versus zone coverage. And that changes things a little bit because against man, it's often a tight curl, tight, a sharply run route. Against zone, you're just looking for that open spot, that dead area. So you may curl it a little bit wider just to get to that place. And usually a tight window. He fired a bullet in there for the completion. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. I have to think a major focus of the halftime means had to be figuring out how to create space for the running operating. Well, what you pointed out to me at half seems accurate. That line has struggled to sustain blocks. Yeah, I would agree with that totally. They've got to focus on staying on their doubles level, make sure that block's secured before they slide off and try and chip someone at the second level. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. People worry about throwing the out route because often it can get jumped and that can turn into an either an incompletion or an interception. But not on that one. Everything came together and he catches it and goes over the sideline. They'll try and run here with Swift. Well, this is going to depend on the spot, but it's not a very generous one. He looks to be about a yard or so short. Only a yard on the pickup there, and it's going to leave them with a fourth down. Well, they're hoping that the second half is better for him than the first half. They've got to find a way to get him going. He's a big part of their offense. Here comes the Lions punter now, as he'll kick it away for the second time. 
His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. And for an offense that is struggling, this is not where you want to start from. Great punt. Fantastic punt. And for all those who wonder, what do punters do during the course of practice each and every day? The best ones do what we just saw there. Work on positioning the football and helping their team. They'll throw on her right by. And they'll get him down up past the 15. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. And what a nice example there of a tight end doing exactly what he needs to do. How about how he worked his way to the outside, made sure he secured the catch, and then anything after that, we count that as a bonus, and he gets enough for the... They'll run with Sanders up the middle. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, sums up and make it difficult for the runner. Hurts throw there taken in by Smith, and he'll be corralled right around the 34. Hurts finding Smith for the Philly first. That was a nicely run slant route, and what the receiver's trying to do is make the defender think he's going upfield for a deeper route, and then breaks it off, usually after about three to four steps, and cuts towards the middle of the field, and now what he's trying to do is use his body, keep the defender away from the football, and give the quarterback a really nice target. A nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Running lanes read a premium in the first half, but he's able to find some room there, and he's hoping that that's a precursor of a big second half. Six yards on that last play. Here's second and four. From the gun, it's Hurts. And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. Kudos for the defense from me on that one because they were prepared the whole way for him to try to escape and hit them for more yardage running it. I like the way they stayed zeroed in on him and kept him contained when he pulled the ball down. I think he was fortunate to get what he did on that run. On third down, they'll run it with Sanders. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Well, you certainly have to give a little credit here because they're playing this game now at their pace. This is ball control football, sustained runs, taking their time, and making it work. Right back to Sanders on first down. And he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. That was well played there defensively. Two tight ends in the formation, which essentially gave them seven blockers up front. Hard to imagine with all that size and beef that they could let a tackler through. But that's exactly what happened. A loss resulted. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. And to the 40-yard line, that's where the return stops. Well, this had trouble written all over from the start. He's got two extra defensive backs in the game he's got to deal with. They're in a dime set. So everywhere he's looking, he's seeing a different color jersey. And sure enough, this one winds up being intercepted. Detroit's offense ready to take over. And here we are almost through three quarters of play, and this passing game still has not really found any kind of rhythm. Put it mildly, because they're not even over 100 yards yet. And in today's NFL, where it's a pass-first league, that is quite surprising. Not many teams patient enough to stick with the run. Everybody wants to advance the ball through the air. They've got to get their timing back. And just a few in the red zone before going out. 
They'll get 17 that time, and the Lions have a first down. Right after the turnover, they come out throwing. And that means it's a sudden change situation. We used to practice it on defense. Sudden change, there's stuff. But you typically run out there a little bit unsettled. I think that's why he came right out throwing the football, hoping to catch him off balance. And he did. They will run straight ahead with Swift. And he can only manage to get a couple. Second and eight coming up. Fletcher Cox there for the tackle. So the scoring dried up here in the third. Nothing that quarter for either side. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL. And it's on EA Sports. Throwing on second and eight. Goff. And it complete. Took a shot. Couldn't connect. They're a lot tighter near the end zone, don't they? And here's the thing. You already probably have three points in your hip pocket. You force a throw here and give up an interception. You come. It's tough in the middle third of the field where he threw that one. The Lions on third down. Just one for three thus far. This is third and eight. He's got his man, T.J. Hawkinson. And he is out of bounds right around the 10-yard line. Goff fighting Hawkinson there for the line first. This defense has certainly had an outstanding second half, haven't they? I know they just gave up a first down there for the offense. They're hoping that that's something they can jumpstart with and maybe start to move the ball a little bit better. But it's been tough sledding for them here the entire second half. Sharks got it left side. Will go down as a gain of six, and it's second down. He decided to run a hitch route. It really helped have a guy who can turn it loose. And boy, he rifled one in there on that one. Not much run after catch, but it worked really well. Working with a second and four. Again, golf. They'll try and set up the screen to Swift. And he is going to lose yardage here. This will wind up a loss on the play. And it brings up third and five now. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Yeah, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. It's down just inside the 20 at the 19. Vaughn Hart, D-tackle, getting the sack. Okay, I'm not sure you could actually draw up a better pass rush than that one right there. Nowhere to go outside. He had to keep backing up and backing up and backing up. Eventually dropped for a huge loss. Here comes an important one now for Austin Seibert. This from 36 yards out. Seibert's kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. All level now at 10 apiece as the kick's away. And here comes a return from just beyond the goal line. And able to get this out to the 25. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. And we assume ball game. After that last field goal has tied us all up, we brace for what should be an exciting rest of this fourth quarter. 
Hurts and the Eagles come up here first and 10 at their 25-yard line. And from the shotgun, he'll throw. And this is caught. It's Brown. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Start the 18. And partner in a tie game in the fourth quarter, you and I both know in the NFL, that's when you lean on your stars. And he came through with a nice catch right there. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They'll look to throw. Smith catches left side. It'll be a gain of five, and that'll make it second down. game continuing to be the defenses because the offenses they're finding it difficult to establish any rhythm whatsoever i like how you come to us in praise of defense brandon because that's exactly right that was an incompletion force there but we've seen it throughout this game both of these defense coordinators they're a step ahead of their offensive counterparts that ball nearly intercepted but he could not hang on Pick there certainly would have been nice. Instead, at least, it'll be fourth down. I think it's safe to say that he's made some questionable decisions out there so far. Forced some throws into tight coverage. He's already been picked off in this game. Fourth down now, but he's fortunate on that one. Not to have another turnover on his ledger. He'll get off a fairly short kick here as this is toward the sideline. And this one will not be returnable as it sounds. And Detroit getting set to go now. Excellent job by their defense to force the punt and provide them with this opportunity all tied in the fourth quarter. Goff and this Lions off that for a first and 10 at their own 27. There's Goff. Got St. Brown running the quick slant here. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. 14 yards that time for number 14. I like what I'm seeing from them here. Tie game in the fourth quarter. They understand the situation. They don't need to be in any rush. Go ahead and huddle up and run your offense. That last completion put them in a nice position to take the lead in this game. Now Goff on first down. Throws out left, it's caught by Williams. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. So give him five yards there on the pitch and catch, and that's gonna bring up second down. Here's Goff. Fighting to stay upright. Dancing to his left. Hit as he throws, and the ball is out. It's a live football. So a potential big play by this defense wiped out by the face mask. And disappointing because it was so unnecessary. They had the sack. But the officials are definitely keeping a close eye on the quarterback, especially the referee. They were able to spot that one immediately. On first and 10, Goff on the slant. This is Chark. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. So the Lions in possession of the football as we welcome you back. They've got it first and 10 as they search for a go-ahead score. Goff now to throw. Out to the left there and complete to the tight end, Hawkinson. And he'll go out of bounds inside the 15-yard line. 
Good yardage after the catch. Is that play good for 30 and a first? And as you saw right there, this is a guy with pretty good speed for a tight end. Nice job there catching the short throw and turning it upfield. He could also be a weapon downfield as well. So how about this for field position after the big play? Inside the 15 now as they come up on first and 10. Swift going to try up the middle. And he'll fight his way down right around the 12. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. Second down and eight. They'll stay on the ground with Swift, and he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the 9-yard line. The Eagles going to take the first of their timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Play number seven now coming up on the drive, third and five. They run out of the gun with Swift. And he'll get nothing out of that one. Now a second timeout called for by the defense as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. This for the lead in the final stages. Seibert able to knock this one through. A little over a minute to play. They have taken the lead. Big kick right there to give forth, but it is still to drive. Right, depending on what happened, drive. That's how we'll analyze it. Team scores. They scored too soon. If they somehow hold on, they may. Here are the Lions now as they line up. And From a yard or two deep, here comes a return. And will not get this out to the 25-yard line as he's dropped at the 23. Hurts and the Eagles now. Down 13-10, a minute 11 to go. How will this thing pan out? We'll watch as they come up on first down. He's back to throw. Pass complete, Goddard. And he gets this one just shy of the 40, down at the 39. That play going for 16 yards to start the drive, first down. And here we are in the fourth quarter, partner, and we watch him drive for what would be a go-ahead touchdown. And you and I both know, this is where you need a quarterback who can keep his cool back there, not just for himself, but to keep the rest of the team relaxed, too. Hurts. And this one is incomplete. So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. Back to throw. Over the middle complete. That's Smith. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Hurts to his former Alabama teammate Smith for an eagle first down. Brandon's okay what they're doing right now. Still able to work the middle of the field, but you know sooner or later, they're going to have to stop the clock. First down now, but that clock rolling. They'll look to throw. That is caught. It's the tight end, Goddard. Yeah, he will go out right near the 35-yard line. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. They got exactly what they wanted there. Out route, catch, get out of bounds, stop the clock. 
And I have to criticize defense here because you know the situation. You want to keep them in bounds and have the clock run. So I'm sitting on the outside portion of the field and not letting them throw an out route. Throw anything inside and I'll make the tackle. An out route? That, that's not the way you're supposed to play it. And now with six seconds remaining, they're going to burn their final timeout. So now one of the biggest kicks of the night is forthcoming. So now with six seconds remaining, we get a timeout on the field. So Hertz is off, and on comes Jake Elliott for the Eagle field goal. This to potentially send us to overtime. And this one is right down Broadway. And they will tie this game here in the final seconds. So a money kick there in the final seconds. And now, barring any hijinks on the kickoff here, partner, I think you and I, we're going to settle in for a little overtime. And I wouldn't have it any other way. This has been a dogfight all through regulation. No reason to think it won't continue in the extra period. Square now at 13 all as he sends this one away. This fielded right at the goal line. Four quarters not enough. We're all even and to overtime we go. How much fun is this for everyone who's watching the game? How much fun is it for us to see this one get an extra period to get settled? a little teaching moment here overtime rules remind us how this goes partner okay so in the past we had sudden death first team to score wins but no longer now if the team receives the ball scores a touchdown they win the game if they kick a field goal though or don't score the other team gets a possession and after both teams get a possession then we're into sudden first team to score wins the game So the Lions, the first crack at things here in overtime as we are back underway. Fielded just outside the goal line. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the yard line. Here's the Lion offense now as they get ready to take over. I cannot imagine how these players and coaches feel, Charles, because my palms sweating up here in the booth now as we go to the third drive of overtime. And as we know from here on out, any points win this football game. I'll throw you a towel as well, partner. I've got one for myself, but let's face it. Our nerves, our pressure, nothing compared to what's going on on that field. Both of the field goal kickers active here early. Can one of them become the hero and end this thing? So they accept the penalty, of course, and push the offense backwards a bit. Now Goff. And this a leaping effort, but it's knocked away and incomplete. Once that ball was popped in the air, you could almost hear the silence, the collective breath being held here in the stadium. Let's be honest about it. We both came out of our chairs, didn't we? All right, anytime you see the ball in the air like that, there is that collective rise, the crowd holding its breath, and boy, oh boy, the moment of truth as it comes down. Man, that was something. Everything magnified here in overtime. And not much to speak of. Call it a one-yard gain up to the 26. 
That's a really good job right there. Just kept stringing that play out, pushing further and further towards the sideline. Really good fundamentals by that defense. He was trying to put his foot in the ground and turn up field. He just couldn't. No, they really had a picket fence in front of him. No room to find to get upfield. And the Eagles with a dime look. Six DBs on third down. Back to throw. Goff. He's got it to Williams. And a pretty nice tackle there, ranging up from his free safety spot as he'll stop him about a yard short. They do get 12, but they'll be marked short. And that leads to a fourth down. Just looking down at this with a naked eye, looks like they have about a yard and a half. Any chance they go for it here? There's a chance, but I have to say, punt the ball here. Get rid of this thing and try and help your defense a little bit. I know there's that temptation, and I know people have it on their play sheet. I have that one play that'll get me what I need, but if you don't get it, you pretty much handed the game to the other team. And here now the punter, Fox, as he sends this one away. So possession goes over here on the punt. And the Eagles will be backed up deep to get the drive started as they take over first and ten. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. On their defense, they did the important thing. They got the stop. They didn't allow a point, but... Now they're backed up here pretty far, Charles. Going to need a significant drive to try to get into position for the game-winning field goal. Yeah, partner, don't you think that defense is on the sidelines right now saying, don't come to us with your problems about where you're starting? We did the important part. We kept them off the board, kept us in the ball game. Find a way to maneuver it downfield, at least get into field goal range, and get us a win. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Throwing his hurts. Now the ball comes loose. And this is scooped up by the Lions. So they will set up shop. Excellent field position in the red zone at the 19-yard line. And a costly, costly mistake. Coaches talk so much about ball security in an overtime so paramount. Barton, do you ever wonder, maybe they talk about it too much? Too much, yeah. It doesn't seem like you can, but maybe by discussing it time and time again, and you know they overemphasized it here, it almost became self-fulfilling. And any points beat them here. Field goal or a touchdown now. And the Eagles are going to go ahead and take another timeout. They'll be left with just one remaining here at OT. So everything rests now on the right foot of Austin Seibert. This to win it in overtime. And he got it. The kick is good in overtime. He's able to split the uprights. And the Lions are going to win this game. down in the books as just a one play drive and then three points tacked on to the end of it. Well, Charles, a very simple mission anytime that you play on your home turf and that is to defend your home turf and today that mission was accomplished. Look, every offseason, every preseason, the head coach goes in front of the team and says the mission for the season, defend our home field every time, split on the road and we'll be in the playoffs. That's why defending the home field is vital. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Lions as we say so long from Ford Field.